Hey everybody, I wanted to uh, shoot this video because as I've corresponded with many of you through YouTube and Gmail, we talk about our libraries that we gain our opinions from and our information. Uh, there's more than one reason to buy a book, and I kind of cover a spectrum on Native American related stuff. I don't, I, I'm not going to say I'm not interested, but I don't specialize in modern slash uh, trade stuff or you know what I mean the, I'm into more of the old don't know nothing about them kind of ancient people um, a lot of these books you can find used or reprinted some of them are insanely expensive I don't have like banner stones or the bird stones books because I can't afford them uh, Actually, I've never seen them for sale at a place. When I'm out, I always look at used books, and if I'm in an antique mall or flea market, I got my eye open because you can find these things for reasonable amounts. So, to start with, our state in the old days used to publish these books Ohio Archaeological and Historical Society publications. Um, I think they've dropped archaeological out of their name now, it's just the Ohio Historical Society, but you can see different things where they found stuff in the years before modern reporting but you know they still printed these out for their I don't know if they were investors back then or if they were just for public but you can find these compendiums pretty cheap and if you look through them some of them have native stuff some won't they'll just be on like shakers and early history and so you gotta look through them. Gustav's printing specializes in a lot of hard to find archaeological stuff and if you can't find it, always look on there. They're pretty reasonable. Um, I'm not much of a order off the internet kind of guy. I like to just find a book and buy it. So there has been a few that just need to hunt it down. Th this one's on loan to me from a good friend, uh, as is that one. But I have the original Ancient Monuments, which is just an old uh, Harper's Weekly or whatever you want to call it. It was a paperback trade way back when. And that is uh, the most comprehensive guide to earthworks, and a lot of them aren't even there anymore. They found a few since then, but it's really neat to see because most of that's just flat fields now or got houses in it. Um, there are all kinds of books on earthworks. Here's another one. This one's not spectacular, so I'm just going to pretend that we looked at it. On the state level here, we have uh, our archaeological society which I love to death for uh, 25 bucks you get four of these magazines a year and you can go to their meetings Whew, I'm getting out of breath here I'm talking too much sorry y'all but the uh, the meetings I can't really tell you too much about because I, I live far away we're getting one started locally so if I haven't sent you a message on here contact me if you'd be willing to drive to where I live at I know there's a few of you but they they blow these things out of the water I wouldn't I'm not trying to slam anybody who's trying to help the hobby by making this magazine, but this magazine is essentially a few articles and you get just a ton of dealer space. So if you didn't have the internet, I would understand why you would be wanting a catalog of things for sale. I get a lot of these catalogs. And uh, I'm just saying these, I mean, auction catalogs in general. The uh, This company has always been good to me. And I just got this one. This is what made me say, you know what, I gotta do the library thing today, because it's got, let me find it here, I'm gonna ask somebody, give her a second to focus, there we go, 270, and if I put this down on my knee, my camera should be able to, give it a second, 5 inch sedalia, who the heck is R. Whittle? thought that was hilarious. I mean, hilarious. Talk about making the big leagues, man. The guy who writes the catalogs is the guy who writes the books that say something's real. So don't y'all be ever doubting my buddy Richard. Um, I'm from close to Dayton. I might as well say I'm from Dayton. And these are, forgive me while my camera shakes because I'm adjusting here. There we go. Who's Who and Indian Relics. I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen these. Um, Mr. Watchell had a famous collection that I wasn't alive to see, but a lot of the people who still hang out in my local town 
did get to meet him and he just I, can't, I don't want to break copyright here and just show you these books and I don't know what the laws are regarding that it's black and white pictures of artifact collections um, I see a lot of stuff for sale out of these books and using these as reference saying you know this point comes from number eight or number ten or whatever and I know that Davis Artifacts reprints these for a reasonable price. I've never paid more than 20 bucks for a who's who. They're one of the easiest find the books. The books. I don't know if that's because they're local and maybe it's just a lot of them were left floating around here. Couldn't tell you. They're interesting. Um, just because something says it came from that, don't believe that it's real. Those are old collections and there's a lot of stuff in there when you look at it, you're like, I don't know. This is my most recent purchase. Colonel Raymond Feetson. Um, I'm sure everybody in your states has got local legends or whatever, like Missouri has a couple. And uh, Mr. Veetson, I don't even know if I'm saying his name right, I never met him, was a fellow who had his own Indian museum. And I never went there, of course. I have the auction catalogs of when he passed away and they sold his collection. But he was a, a pioneer in Ohio archaeology, did some famous cave digs in Kentucky, and uh, this is just essentially his biography. I hope some of uh, you big time hunters think about doing this someday because it's just, it's a fascinating book. Here's his virgin mound, is what he called it. He found a mound that was virgin, they dug it out and wrote it up. And then Glover's Cave is a famous spot. And it's just, you know, interesting to read shows off some of his collections, some of the things that, and this is when this was legal, so these are old books. But it's just, uh, it's neat to see. I know there's uh, another, a newer book, the uh, Art Gerber, Gerbler, Gerber story. I'd like to get that someday. I keep promising I'm going to buy it. Okay, so back to over here in this corner, being in Ohio, I apologize again for my shaky photography, I should have slot this through and like got me a picnic table somewhere and sell these up. Robert Converse, who is still thankfully alive and writing beneficial things, wrote this, what we call the, the Bible of the field, and uh, it's a killer book, and this one is... I don't know, I want to say 30 years old or something. Black and white, easy to find. But it was recently replaced by this bad boy, which is a killer, killer, killer book. You can still purchase this from uh, the uh, Archaeological Society of Ohio. But it has eccentrics, types, everything has a drawing and a photo. And what is really, really, really cool is in the back of it is the types of material and it has a map of where it came from. This is my local. I know that's not in Zoom or anything, but again, not trying to break copyrights, but just saying this one is killer. It's, I don't know what the regular price is. I bought the author's edition. I want to say it was like 50 or 60 bucks. It's hardback. I always try and splurge for the hardback when I get a chance, but this book isn't made to get thrown in the car and taken out in the fields. This is the Stone Tools version, same author, same place if you go to the website. And, uh, yeah, I'm not an expert on the stone stuff, but this one's got really good photos. Not that I'm showing you my blurry picture, but again, not trying to get busted for showing off something you're not allowed to on the internet. Um, Gustav's printed this, which is the Ulrich group of mounds and I have walked this property and I'm friends with the gentleman that owns it. He actually gave me this copy. Oh man, copper celts and why not? But it appears just to be a group of Adena mounds. We've got a lot of Adena mounds strewn along. He still has this blade and I'm trying to get an article together for our magazine for this group showing this off in color. But um, just excavated a bunch of blades and the ads and then my main spot that I hunt the most is uh, in this book also because it was a group of mounds along the creek so yeah. Uh, Lar Hotham would be 
like now we have Converse. We, Mr. Hotham passed away, unfortunately, but he wrote a lot of really good books. This is my pocket guide when I went to Kentucky. I took this with me. This is probably my third or fourth copy of this book. This was my uncle gave me this book as a starter when I found my first point, and it really just fired it up. But this is the cheap. You can get it for under ten bucks. Um, some of them I picked up for three to five, and all black and white, unfortunately. But the pictures are against a grid, which I think is very, very helpful because you know that those, that grid is an inch. And uh, so you got a size, just no photo or no photo, no drawings. I, I think drawings help more when you're trying to figure out a type that you don't know. Um, that's just another mound builders stuff. Here we got some interesting. These are mounds in Ohio or along the Ohio River, and it has maps and gives you a little description of them. And uh, if you're around here, kind of. Indiana and Kentucky that area this is all of North America but it's not just mounds it's landmarks in general so it could be more modern Indian and then of course you got your price guides and I got a ton of these Hotham ones um, over streets there's a lot of resources out here in the paper form but the internet I think is really just dominated a lot of stuff if you go to the Ohio Archaeological website they have a PDF sort of like a quick guide that really has almost everything that's in this book drawing wise just no photographs or the material types um, these can be found online and you can read about most of this stuff online and find most of your sites online so I kind of understand why the books are taking a dive and uh, yeah so there was that, and Richard, congrats for making the big time, because you're in my stone collection, my photo collection, my video collection, and my catalog collection now. So rock on, everybody. Find something cool and put it up, because all my fields are yucky right now, and somebody needs a turn. Take it easy.